What was it like filing for bankruptcy? It was embarrassing when you didn't know um, um, uh, what bankruptcy, what bankruptcy was all about. After you sit down with a bankruptcy lawyer and he goes in detail and explain um, about it's more so protection, so people can't take things from you and take your money. So I was like, okay. The only thing is, it was going to be embarrassing about is me being who I am, and how they going to, how the people going to um, receive it. And most people don't receive it, right? Because they, most time, they look at it another kind of way. <laughs> right. So uh, after I got over that smoke cloud clear, I was just happy that, you know, um, I did that now, and until and, and waited till later. And I hope, um, I pray that some of my friends and peers and people I know, um, I make sure that they taking care of every. I hope m me was a great example for them to go pay attention, so these guys wouldn't wait until they had to go through a situation. And I know plenty of guys have have went through the situation that I went through, and we all upset because of the fact people out there are just <laughs> this is ruthless, man. <laughs> Tell about the judgment that you won. Oh man, just to get a judgment against that guy to get some of my money back because um, I had a judgment against me. <laughs> so it was a painful moment because when you have a, somebody coming and trying to take your Rose Bowl rings, your trophies, your cars, your house, and you never took a dime from the person, like the money never came into my account that supposedly the loan that I was supposed to get never came to none of my accounts, but you suing me, it was, it was painful, it was hurting. I was, I was pissed. <laughs> I was very pissed because um, somebody ruled a judgment against me that I had no clue about. So knowing that I have a judgment against somebody now, um, now I get to give him a taste of what happened to me uh, for harassing you, making sure that you pay me back the money that you took from me. And, and the team that you had around you when you, you know, this was going on was your uncle who helped raise you, uh, your agent, financial advisors. Well, I don't really for... know, you know, again, I don't really know what those guys was doing. I'm just, you know, the paperwork shows everything, so. What, what hurt the most? Well, it hurt because he was my uncle, for one. Uh, you know, I've been, he, it's my dad brother, so I definitely thought that he had my back a little bit more. Uh, well, you know, I don't really fault him because some of the stuff wasn't his fault neither. They was doing stuff past him too. So um, as I talked to him and stuff, I mean, he was doing some things that was, um, not cool, but at the same time, it, most of the big stuff that was going on, he had no clue about it. He was just now finding out himself about a lot of stuff that was going on. But, you know, again, I don't really want to talk about all that mess. Yeah. I'm way past that and over that, and I'm happy. Uh, are there, outside of having bad people around you, are there decisions you made financially that looking back you would have done differently? No, I, I would always take care of my family. <laughs> yeah. I still do it to this day right now. I still take care of my family right now. So a lot of people say you need to say no, but I'm not going to tell my mom no. I mean, if it's just she need $1,000 or something, I'm going to give that $1,000 to my mom or my sister or my wife or my mom or her mom. That's just who I am uh, because I know I'm going to work very hard to go get that 1000 whatever I gave out. Right. And I'm going to put it right back into the to account because that's this type of person I am. Didn't you say somewhere though that one of the toughest things to learn was saying no? Well, it was saying no to every month when it was back in the day when it was like that. That was the hard part. Um, so, you know, as now, it's just like everybody understands now that it's a budget going on. We have to live by this budget. Um, in order for us to live financially free, uh, we have to take care of our responsibilities of understanding I can't do it right now. I can, but I'm, I, I can't do it right now. What do you think you learned financially from having gone through all of this? Well, definitely don't sign a, a power attorney. <laughs> well, I mean, it's two different ones, but they, you know, I, I, you know, I want to go into that, but um, definitely not sign a power attorney and, um, you know, write, sign your own checks stuff like that, uh, you know, and then get a second opinion about any information that's given from somebody you're working with, you know, get it back, check it over again, um, you know, make sure that stuff is right. For more clips from this interview, visit GrahamBensinger.com.